Well, political punches are being thrown in the form of attack ads from both sides. One ad is even blaming Mitt Romney for a woman's death from cancer. Now some conservatives are calling on the former governor, Romney, to take off the gloves and fight back. Big. Listen. The campaign has failed to capitalize and pivot. I mean, they were given a golden opportunity with this uh, steel worker's wife cancer ad to turn around and say, guess what? You know who the real murderers are in the White House if you want to talk about figurative murder? How about the Obama jobs death toll? The governor is speaking. He's speaking straightforwardly, directly mm -hmm. to these issues, uh, dis dismissing uh, intelligently the, the, this ad, uh, the most recent ad. Uh, but there's no fire, there's no passion, there's no, uh, well, there's no stuff there. My God, where is the energy and the, and, the, and, the, and the drive? All right, Lou, so is it no longer just enough to be a qualified candidate? Does Romney also need to be a showman as well? Here to weigh in is our political panel, Bernard Whitman, a former pollster for President Clinton and author of 52 Reasons to Vote for Obama, and Anthony Holm, a Republican strategist and author of 52 Reasons Not to Vote for Obama. I think we know where you guys stand. Also, Jackie Salit, author of Independence Rising and President of Independent Voting. Good morning to everybody. Morning. All right, uh, let's start with you, Anthony. What do you think? Do you think, uh, and clearly Mitt Romney is your candidate, but does he have to step up his game and get tougher? I would like him, of course, tactically to come out and be more aggressive. But more important than that is linking the hypocrisy and the lies. I mean, it starts at the top. This is our president who went out there and said, my health care is not a mandate. You get to keep your health insurance. Right. Lied. Systematic uh, set of lies. And it's not shocking to me that they are continuing it at Priorities USA or as deputy campaign manager with very little harm from the top. But, uh, Jackie, that's just the way the super PACs run. You know, the dirtier, the better, it seems, on the super PACs. Yeah, what interested me about Romney's response to the ad was that I thought that he was making a play now for independent voters in, in critiquing what, uh, mm -hmm. the, what the ad did. In what way? Well, he's basically trying to raise the issue of culture change, which is an issue that's feel very strongly about. I don't think he did a particularly good job at it, and I think part of the backlash that you see, and you see it in the spots that you just ran, is that conservatives don't want Romney talking to independents. They want Romney talking only to conservatives, and that sets off a set of fireworks. But do you think the independents, because that's your expertise, do you think they prefer somebody who doesn't, isn't bombastic and goes, that guy's a liar? I think independents recognize that what it's going to take to make culture change in this country is going to be a long, hard process. You're going to need structural reform that changes the climate and changes the way politics works. Okay. Bernard? You know, I think it's sort of outrageous that Romney's campaign is crying foul about a super PAC ad when his super PAC destroyed Gingrich and Santorum. That's why he is uh, the nominee. But the real, uh, I think, deficit in Romney is being straight with the American people. They don't know who he is. He won't release his tax returns. He won't explain his bank accounts. two years. He two years. His father released a decade plus. He, and John, and, John McCain, four years ago, released two years. John McCain was a well-known public figure. Mitt Romney is not. John despite running for wife, president, Teresa Hines Carey released zero. Running, his wife is running for president. The truth is, we don't know who Mitt Romney is. <laughs> his, economic plan, his economic plan does not add up. If you are a multimillionaire and want $725,000 tax cut, then vote for Romney. But the middle class taxes are going to end up going up under his plan and adding $5 trillion to the deficit. This I is not a man we can afford. Totally to different Back standards. To taxes. Yeah, exactly. All right. Classic. Now that we've got things going, good uh, first segment. These guys and gal are going to stick around because speaking of ads, check out this one showing Congressman Alan West punching an old white woman. West has sucked it to seniors, voting to end Medicare as we know it. He's whacked women with his votes for huge cuts in women's health care funding. What if that ad were the other way around? Our panel sticking around to discuss that. Then check it out. Talk about hitting below the belt. A new political ad down in Florida it takes a jab at Congressman Alan West. Take a look. Alan West fancies himself a fighter. Maybe so. West has sucked it to seniors, voting to end Medicare as we know it. He's whacked women with his votes for huge cuts in women's health care funding. And he's mauled middle class families by supporting a budget plan that would have cut taxes on the rich while eliminating our tax breaks for college tuition and mortgages. Alan West is a fighter, all right, but it's time for us to fight back and knock him out of Congress once and for all. 
Okay, Congressman West, who's going to join us next hour, says the ad is reprehensible. We're back with our political panel for a reaction. Jackie, can you imagine? Okay, so there's Alan West punching out an old white lady. Can you imagine if it were, you know, the dynamic were turned around? Well, you know, there is a solution to this kind of situation, specifically for Florida, too, which is that Florida is a closed primary state, mm -hmm. which means that independents are not allowed to vote in the primaries, which means that the atmosphere for partisanship is established right from the very beginning. See, they run these ads really to get the media talking about them. They're not geared Absolutely. towards the public, they're geared towards the media. Here you are talking about it on, on Fox News. But the real issue is if, that if, if, if this is concerning to people, which I think it is, then we have to do something about the way campaigns are run and the way the whole political culture operates. Unfortunately, That's what independents want. Uh, Bernard, the problem is uh, negative ads work. Uh, you know, they do. You look at the president's numbers right now, and he's been beating up uh, Mitt Romney on, on Bain Capital and with the latest Fox News polls. They do seem like uh, he's getting some benefit from it. But what, one of the things about this particular PAC ad is apparently it is the PAC funded by Alan West's opponent's father. No, that's true. And, and Steve, you're right. Negative ads do work when they have elements of truth in it, like that ad does. Alan West actually has been a complete disaster, and he has socked it to seniors, and he has socked it to kids. The ad is obviously a cartoon, but I find it very hard to feel sorry for self-described Spartacus, Alan West, who said things like a Nazi leader, Joseph Goebbels, would be proud of the Democrat Party. He told uh, 80 members of Congress and the Democratic Party that they were communists and they should get the hell out of the United States. I mean, he has been outrageous and over the top in his statement. So, fair is fair. Well, Anthony, he describes it as a cartoon, but, you know, there you've got Alan West punching an old white lady. If it were a white politician punching, a, you know, National a outrage. person of color, there would be, right? National outrage. Three issues. One, reverse racism here, because it's a different standard for depending on the color of your skin. Second, the figures, be cartoon or not, are woman beating. That is what is implied in here. He is harming women and punching them. And third, I'll take you back to, remember, the bullet targets on the, um, from Sarah Palin in the national outrage, even sure. the international outrage. It's a totally different standard. Now we want to reach out and say, oh, this is acceptable. It's not. It is totally unacceptable. His opponent needs to lose. We ultimately can beat him at the ballot box. I think it's very, very hard to inject the issue of moral standards into political campaigning. <laughs> <laughs> Those two things just simply don't belong well, together. Particularly when you're talking about Alan West, who has proved himself to be one of the most outrageous politicians in America. Like you don't Alan like West, him. goodbye. All right. And goodbye to you, Bernard <laughs> and Jackie and Anthony. Thank All right. you. Uh, great Thank panel you. debate today.